What's up everybody, we're back with another raid guide and today we're taking a look at Queen Ajara on Mythic Difficulty. I'll be going over most of the mechanics, how to deal with them and our overall tactic for this fight. So, for this encounter you want 2 tanks, 3 healers and 15 DPS. Setup wise, at least 1 or 2 warlocks and 1 disc priest for dispels and a paladin to help out with beckons and a hunter for binding shot. Other than that it doesn't matter too much, so at least there's no 5 stacks. This fight is very mechanically complicated, or at least there's a ton of them. So I will go through all of this step by step and face by face, and I'll add timestamps to the video if you only want to check certain parts of the fight. I have a feeling this will be a long rant. So with that said, let's check out what's new on Mythic. Well, there's a few new things on Mythic. Most noticeable is the Divide and Conquer. Ajara summons a wall of arcane energies that splits the play space in two. Big Beam across the room, touch it and and you die. Immunities works, but other than that, certain destruction. Doesn't even register any damage taken, you just die. And because of this beam, we will move the boss, adds, raids, etc. based on how the beam spawns, but I'll go over this more in phase 2 and 3. In phase 1, pretty much just don't touch the beam and you're fine. And in phase 4, the beam also rotates, just for the fun of it. And the next big thing are the Queen's Decrees. On Mythic, you're given up to 3 decrees to obey, which makes for some weird dancing during the intermission. So for this we use a weak aura to help us out. We have world markers already placed out and each world marker corresponds to the weak aura. And depending on what combo of decrees you get, you go to a different world marker and the weak aura tells us what combos goes where. But I'll go over how it looks and how it works. So to start everything off, when you transition to a new phase, you need to stack up on square the whole raid and wait for the decrees to spawn. Following this, the weak aura will do the rest. However, the assignments and everything is based off the world marks and where you stack. So if you don't stack on where we have our square mark or roughly around there, it won't work. If two free people are too slow in to stack, it won't work. So keep that in mind. It can work if you're lucky if the people who are slow in luck out and get solo move, but most cases that's not what happens. Anyways, let's take a look at the different marks. So for blue mark, you can get forward plus stack. Simply move a few step forwards and stack with the other players there. For the skull mark, it's just to take a step to the left and soak. Same with moon, but you take a step to the right instead. Sometimes the arcane orb can spawn a bit too much to the left or to the right. And if that happens, simply stand where you take no sanction stacks and soak until the orb is too small. Move out, soak the rest, move back in. It can and it will happen, but if you play it correctly, you'll only get a few stacks. The thing to keep in mind with these decrees is you will spawn a circle underneath you which you need to be inside to not get stacks, but you will also get a swirly effect around you which can touch or overlap another player. Sometimes you'll kindly have to ask the other players near you to get on out of that personal space. Next out is orange, simply stand on the mark and soak the orb. Same thing goes for purple, green and cross. Then there's the dreaded star. For star you'll either get star soak or star move. Star soak, stand on the star mark. Star move means run around the star mark with your star buddies. Keep in mind that you don't need to run in a perfect conga line, you need to keep moving and have a player inside your circle, be it the two guys standing still soaking or another runner, it doesn't matter. And the last one is solo move, which you just run around a bit. Ashara herself now sports a beefed up version of her old magic missile, so now anytime you are hit by her arcane missiles, you will get a stack of arcane vulnerability, which increases damage taken from arcane abilities. What this means is that during phase 2 and onward, you'll need to drop your stacks every now and then by LOSing the boss. And before we start to delve into the abyss that is Queen Ashara, make sure to have a soak rotation made up beforehand for the wards. We use a weak aura for this as well, simple square that pops up to remove mind you when it's your time to soak. And now with the recent changes to Ashara, you only need to soak around 4 or 5 stacks each time. But I really really recommend having a weak aura as a reminder, it will help progressing a lot faster. Also keep in mind what happens throughout the phases when you do assign these, like start of phase 2 you tank Ashara in the middle, so put melee soakers there, for example. 
And while it's not being a new feature on Mythic, the HP decrease you get from soaking is one of the bigger parts of this fight, and something I suggest you put your focus on early. Getting used to the fact that you might die from an ability when you're at 75% or 50% HP, uh, well, you get used to it, but the sooner the better. With that said, let's check out phase 1. So start at phase 1 by tanking the mini bosses on top of each other for a few seconds, then pull them behind the pillar. We don't tank swap at all in this phase. Tanks make sure to stack the purple goo as much as possible to make tiny zones instead of having it all over the place and make sure to never ever put any goo on any of the world marks. Whoever tanks the lady ad make sure to use a defensive or external for all the fourth application of her frost blast. Make sure to get the big ads down before they start pounding away on the wards. We use binding shot into a stun like kidney shot. And if you're a melee DPS and the divide and conquer beam spawns, if it splits the path to whichever ward the big ad is heading to, make sure to be on the side that allows you to continue nuking it. This will result in some AFKing behind the beam since you can't get back to the mini bosses. So always be on the side that allows you to nuke the ad the longest even if it separates you from the mini bosses. Other than that, make sure to soak arcane orbs. We assigned a couple of players to soak in different areas of the room to make sure we never missed one. Make sure to aim the spears away from the pillars and consoles. Again, if you have to choose between boss damage and properly aiming the spear, go for the spear. And following this you want to push the boss to phase 2 a few seconds after the second set of arcane orbs, which is why DPS doesn't matter, which is why it's okay to AFK behind the beams. Most guilds that push after the second set of arcane orbs needs to stop DPS for a good 15 or 20 seconds. So focusing on the big ads and dealing with the mechanics is a far better investment than trying to burn the boss some extra and then having to get to do full stop on DPS even earlier. Anyways, as soon as the mini bosses die, make sure that all the orbs are finished soaking, then move to the square for the decrease. Deal with the decrease, as I mentioned earlier, follow the weak aura. If you get a standstill decree, make sure to help out with healing if you can during this phase. Let's take a look at phase 2. Starting off I want to talk about the arcane bursts. For phase 2 we deal with all our arcane bursts around the console, or rather to the right side of the console. So the free burst targets runs behind the console and one by one they go out to the right side to get dispelled. We have a weak aura for this as well pops up with a burst order, so three names pop up in order like Stanky1, Stanky2, etc. And it really helps both the bursties as well as the dispellers. On the note of dispellers, here's where we get more use of the old Warlock. Warlocks can place their imps near the console to dispel bursts. So we used Warlock 1 and Warlock 2 for the first burst and mass dispel on the corner of the console for the third one. And if someone could dispel themselves like healers, rogues, etc, they did that. And lastly, on the subject of burst, if you've soaked any of the wards, make sure to drop your arcane vulnerability stacks before you get dispelled or you'll probably die. And for the beckons in phase 2, we use blessings of protection on whichever DPS gets it on the first beckon. Following that, make sure to have gateways up for the beckons, priests be ready for grips if something goes wrong, and make sure to have a plan for yourself if you get beckoned. Like, make sure to save blink charges etc ready for each and every beckon. Keep track of gateways and you'll see far less beckons going out. So with that said, phase 2. When Ashara spawns, pull her to the middle ward and keep her there until you've dealt with the adds that spawns. You will get a new divide and conquer beam that spawns roughly at the same time as the adds swarm in. Just make sure you are on whichever side that allows you to get to the console. Otherwise, arcane burst and arcane detonation gets a bit tricky. For the adds themselves, we used Brewmaster Leg Sweep as the first stun, specced into Tiger Tail Sweep for that extra range. Following this, we use Dragon's Breath into a Priest Knock to knock him towards the console, and if needed, we followed up with yet another Ring of Peace as a backup. It is extremely important that you don't add any energy to the wards during this phase, so dealing with these adds, CCing and getting them down before they sacrifice themselves will make all the difference. It is so much fun to tank Ashara when she has like 50-90% to 90 damage increase, I promise. Following this we pull Ashara to the left side of the console and keep her there for the rest of phase 2. You will have one arcane detonation and you should use this time to reset your arcane stacks. After this it's all out on Ashara again. And here's yet another delicate fun timing. You want to transition to phase 3, like 3-4 three, seconds before Ashara's next beckon timer goes off, which is right after your second set of arcane bursts. So 
To deal with this, we had the burst targets run behind the console. The first burst goes out to the right side of the console as always to get dispelled. However, then number 2 stays behind the console and burst number 3 goes out to the right side and we mass dispel hitting both the bursties that are left. It might not be needed but it helped us deal with the burst faster which gave the targets more time to get to the square before decrease starts. Any priests can and should be ready to grip the bursties as soon as they are dispelled. However, it is a lot more fun if you grip them in before they get dispelled and they wipe half the raid. Either way, stack on square, deal with the decrease and phase 3 starts. So, for phase 3, one thing to keep in mind during phase 3, when you break a shield from an ad with a spear, you can LOS the raid wide damage, which really helps out a lot. And if you've soaked wards and you get targeted by a spear, you will need a cooldown to survive. Keep in mind again, for phase 3, that you'll be running around with less than 50% of your HP, so mechanics matter. So, at the start of phase 3, you want to keep Ashara on the left side of the console, pick up and pull the new Mermid on to Ashara and the first shield ad, and start nuking the shield ad. You want to kill that ad before it ever casts the shield, so it should die roughly at the same time as your first arcane detonation in phase 3. Following this, we'll let the divide and conquer beam decide where we go. Some guilds go for the same ad always and pre-move before the beam spawns, but we just go for which Whichever ad is open, if you will, when the beam splits the room. So when the beam spawns, Raid moves to the side of the console furthest away from the beam, and you tank Ashara on the opposite side, so to the side closest to the beam. The Mermid on ad tank needs to drag the Mermid on behind the pillar of whichever ad the beam allows you to get, which will be your second shield ad to kill. So he drags the Mermid on behind the pillar and line of sights the entire raid, and if done correctly, then the tank is the only one in line of sight of the Mermid on. He will get targeted by the spear and can break the shield while the raid deals with the first shield ad. Lots of shield. We kept the mermaid on near Ashara and the first shield ad until the first spear cast then moved it behind the pillar. So as soon as he started casting his spear the mermaid on tank started running behind the pillar to get the ad there as soon as the cast was done. Following this, make sure to get the first shield ad down before or during the arcing detonation, then move over to the second ad. Ashara should be moved over to the second ad directly after the arcane detonation. Make sure not to drag her through the middle, you don't want her to empower it as you run by. Following this, everyone should be at the second ad, Ashara should be tanked LOS from the raid on the opposite side of the pillar. Arcane burst, just run LOS around the pillar to get dispelled. Warlocks might need to move their pets for dispels in this phase, so keep that in mind. And again, and make sure to have gateways up for beckons and call if you need a grip. For the ad itself you have two approaches. If you have enough DPS, nuking down the second shield ad before it reshields a second time makes everything a bit easier. It allows you to nuke down the first mermaid on fast and makes life easier for tanks. If you can't reliably do it, then you need to keep the first mermaid on alive long enough for it to break the shield, then get it down and hopefully make it over before the new divide and conquer spawns. So the time frame you have to work with is that the second second shield ad needs to die and the raid needs to make it over to the third ad before getting cut off by the beam. You can leave classes like mages and rogues behind on the shield to finish it off if needed. However, during this you will also get your second mermaid on, which needs to get to the third ad before its spear cast or else no shield break. So what we did for this, since we didn't always kill the second shield ad in time, is that just before the second mermaid on spawns, the current mermaid on tank taunt Ashara and tanks both her and the first Myrmidon. So now the free tank picks up the newly spawned Myrmidon, moves it in position for third ad. Doing so took away any risks of missing the spear so the ad didn't get across fast enough or anything like that and it allowed us to keep the first Myrmidon at the boss in case we couldn't burn the second shield ad down fast enough and needed a spear. The obvious downside of this though is tank damage. It hurts but manageable with cooldowns. Either way, second ad needs to die and raid needs to make it across before the beam. Following this, it slows down a bit. You'll still need to deal with beckons and arcane bursts, but the DPS check kinda takes a break. Stanky, not this again. To... Following this, it's just rinse repeat. The Myrmidon you brought with you, which is the second one, needs to die fairly fast. The third Myrmidon needs to be alive long enough for one shield break. Then, following that, you want to push Ashara to 50% at the same time as the third shield ad dies. Fight hops into phase 4 when the third ad dies or Ashara hits 50%. So that's why you want them to go down at the same time. But 50% or 52% either way is fine. Just don't push Ashara to 50% with an ad on 20 or something. 
something. So phase three can be a bit overwhelming. It's a very strict dance, if you will, with a lot of positioning and timings to worry about. And you'll be doing it with like 50% less HP or so, which means mistakes show. However, once you get used to the timings, there's very little RNG, which is nice. If you want more in-depth info about it, like tank swaps, exact positionings, etc., make sure to hit me up. With that said, let's take a look at phase four. Phase 4 is, again, a series of dance maneuvers and positionings. You'll transition into Phase 4 roughly at the same time as a greater reversal, which we will take advantage of. So, a few seconds into Phase 4, ranged DPS and healers should move around the pillar, soak the middle ward, reset their stacks, then move to the edge of the room opposite of the console to bait nether portals. Or the big zones on the ground. Place a gateway going from this location to the console. Boss should be tanked near the pillar in line of sight of the raid so they can DPS while baiting or baiting. And as soon as the zones spawn, click the gateway, move to the console and bring Ashara over to the console as well. Pop Bloodlust and start nuking away. At this point, deal with the console clicking by having a class with immunity click it like a holy paladin, if he ever had bubble ready for it. Either way, you need to have the immunity up as you're clicking the console and we did it with roughly 2-3 to three seconds between each click. On top of this, make sure to reset your arcane stacks at least once as you're dealing with the console and soak any energy in the console ward that's left. Following this, keep an eye on where the divide and conquer spawns and get ready to dodge eye lasers. During the eye lasers or shortly after, you're going to move the boss and raid following the divide and conquer beam as it rotates, ending up near one of the pillar wards. Once there, range and healers move out to the edge, bait nether portals, then move boss and raid back to the console for some more clicking. Make sure you don't bait portals on one of the wards in case you have to soak him. Following this, it's pretty much rinse repeat. Click console, dodge eye lasers and nuke boss. If you've soaked the wards properly throughout the phases and especially in phase 4, and you manage to dodge the lasers, then phase 4 should be pretty much cake compared to phase 3. Beckons, however, can be a nightmare in this phase, so move gateways if needed and prepare to grip or double grip. Other than that, tanks, we swapped on around 3 or 4 stacks in this phase and reset our arcane stacks in between all of the swaps, just to be safe. You can probably stay in one round and reset every other swap instead. Keep in mind that the healing debuff lasts a lot longer than the arcane one, so you can DPS for a good 10 seconds before you need to line of sight. Also, make sure to have some healing cooldowns like Devo or Barrier for console clicks and use personal cooldowns, healing potions, health stones, whatever you can to survive it when you're there. And healers get creative in phase 3, phase 4. Line of sight is a bitch. We've had one healer who focused on tank healing stand away from the raid from time to time just to have line of sight on tanks, for example. And I think that pretty much covers everything. Hope it helps you guys out and make sure to leave a comment if you get her down. If you have any questions at all, make sure to hit me up here on Facebook or by becoming a Patreon. As a Patreon, you will get access to my Discord where you can get most of my UIs, weak auras, notes and things like that. And it's usually the fastest way to get a hold of me. And on that note, I also want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreons. I really appreciate the support over this tier. It's really awesome to see it grow into a tiny community and even more awesome to see all of you guys help each other out with different issues that you face during your progression. So again, thanks a lot for that. And finally, if you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave me a like and ring that notification bell. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next raid.